Hello, welcome back to the tutorial series. I assume you have uh, installed Blender and the Animation Nodes add-on. And now let's check out Node Trees and the Node Tree execution. So first of all, I like to split my view here and then you can find Animation Nodes in here. This gives you this kind of view, which is a Node Tree. Just like the shading node tree that you might be familiar with. So here we have the shader and you can plug in all sorts of different nodes and hook them up like that to create a material. And then uh, also you know the compositing node tree. So if you have a final image rendered then you can do like color corrections and all sorts of effects in here with nodes to get the final output. Same thing now with animation nodes. Um, except that we can have many parallel uh, animation nodes, node trees. So at the beginning we have nothing here. So we have to create our first node tree, which is now called node tree, and this is it. So by hitting shift A, we get this huge menu that might look a little bit overwhelming at first. But um, this is how you add nodes, just like with the material nodes or the compositing nodes. So each node tree, let me just add a node, maybe, I don't know, an object instancer. So we have nodes, we have noodles to connect up the nodes to create some sort of program actually. So this is sort of a visual way of programming. Instead of writing Python code inside of Blender, you can use animation nodes to do all sorts of operations with nodes and animation nodes, as you can see here, comes with a whole bunch of predefined nodes for you to use. Now, each node tree is being executed. Um, now, let's talk about this for a second. We have the uh, material node tree. And if you think of when does a material node tree get executed, you can think of it as whenever. So I have. Uh, set this to cycles and I set it to rendered view. So this node tree here gets executed every time a light ray or a camera ray hits an object that has this material assigned to it. So the rendering engine executes this whole node tree, which could be, you know, quite the complicated thing with maybe um, materials or textures or whatever, and then different roughness, different metallic effects and whatnot. So this gets executed for every ray. The compositing node, of course, once you have an image rendered, the compositing node tree takes that image as an input and then you can do like color correction, for example, or color balance and change the colors. And then you end up on the output node here with a final image. So this gets executed when the image is done. And of course, whenever you change something in here, then this node tree gets executed. So when does an animation nodes node tree get executed? Well, um, right now, the default setting that you have when you first start animation nodes is all the time. So over here, uh, you can switch this properties panel over here to node tree. If you've seen a, an animation nodes tutorial made before March 2020, you might be familiar with hitting the T key on the keyboard. And then that menu came up on the left here and it looked very similar or just like this. But now uh, in the latest builds, the node editor uses the same as all the other editors in Blender 2.8. X and T just brings up the tools, in this case, the tools for the node tree. And over here on the right now, we have what we used to have on the left inside of the node tree tab. And you can open and close that stuff on the right here with the N key. You know what? Maybe I should switch on this. So you can see when I hit N, you can see here the keys that I'm typing. So right now, auto execution is switched on, that's the default, and always is switched on, which is also the default. And you can see down here, Animation Nodes is executing this node tree, which doesn't do anything yet, but it's executing uh, this node tree all the time, as fast as it possibly can, 
and you can see here each execution takes 0, 0.0 something milliseconds. And if I switch off always, then this stops. So now it's not executed at all. What I like to do here is switch off always and switch on these three options. Uh, tree changed, frame changed, or property changed. What does that mean? It's every time I change the animation nodes tree down here. So maybe I want to add a vector wiggle node. And now that I've added this node, the tree, the whole tree got executed. Now if I uh, hook this up, look at this, then again, the node tree got executed. If I change a property here, because of property changed, the node tree gets executed. And if I change the, a frame number on the timeline, or if I hit spacebar to start playback, then for each frame, this tree gets executed as well. I think this is a better setting because this always setting just uses up um, a lot of resources. And usually, I mean, there are uh, situations where you want this, but usually I like to start with this setting. Then we have uh, a feature here to create a trigger that would trigger the execution of the node tree. And then we have a button here where we can simply manually uh, execute the node tree. So for very complex node trees or very complex scenes here, um, you might want to switch off auto execution altogether and simply just create your node tree and execute it. And you know, if your node tree takes like 10 seconds to execute, you don't want this to happen all the time. Every time you do something, you just, whoops, you just wanna execute it manually. Then we have uh, in here a feature called bake to keyframes, which can be very handy. So for example, if we're changing location or rotation or scale, or basically anything else that you could uh, keyframe in Blender, and you're changing that using animation nodes and animating that using animation nodes, then you can uh, also click bake to keyframes and uh, animation nodes will create keyframes for all the objects, for all the settings for you. And then basically you don't need uh, audio execution at all anymore, unless of course you change something and you have to go back. Another very important thing here to note is that you don't just have one node tree, you can have many node trees and they're all executed uh, in parallel at the same time. So I create a new node tree. So this is empty now. Um, what can I do here? Maybe take an, I don't know, object input and a transform input, something. We will look at all of this stuff in the next videos. I can take this cube. So now I have this node tree and this node tree has its own settings here. And this is still set to auto execution and always the default setting. You can see it's being executed. And the other node tree, the first one that I created, this one, uh, has auto execution set here. And you can even see down here in the overview that this one is basically running. This one isn't at the moment because there's nothing to execute uh, unless I press this button or I change a property, then this node tree gets executed as well. So you can have many, 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 many node trees in here. Maybe just to keep things uh, organized or if you uh, import or copy stuff from a different uh, file that you have, a node setup that you already have for doing a certain, certain animation or something, then you can have multiple node trees. Okay, so I already talked about this uh, panel on the right here for this node tree, the settings for this node tree. Now there's uh, one other thing here that we have to talk about and that's the item tab. And you can see whenever you uh, click on a node or when you uh, select a node, this changes here. And it basically shows you all the inputs that this node has, all the outputs. You can enable and disable uh, certain inputs. And this is important to know because there are nodes that don't have by default all of its inputs or outputs enabled and visible. For example, the mesh input node which gives you, for example, I select the cube, put it in here, and gives you the mesh data of that cube. You can see here, has many more outputs that, than what is uh, enabled by default here. 
So if I select all of these, you can get the vertex location, the normals, the centers, the polygons, the edges and all that stuff. So sometimes you just want to check in here that maybe the node gives you uh, more inputs or more outputs than what is originally by default visible. Also, instead of using this panel on the right here that you can enable with N, you can also just select this and hit U on the keyboard and that gives you the socket settings here, which is the same as this, as you can see. So that's the U key on the keyboard. You can go to the advanced settings for a node or the socket settings. This node doesn't have any advanced settings, so that's that. And the last thing I want to talk about here in this first episode of the tutorial series is when you hit shift A all the way at the bottom or almost all the way at the bottom, you can find what is called a viewer and there's different types of viewers that can come in very handy for debugging. So if you're putting together something like this, not even sure what this is supposed to be doing at the moment. So first this is zero, set this to five. And then we want a list here and we want five nodes. Okay, so if I plug this into the viewer, you can see here, I also have to enable cube here. So now this is actually doing something and the viewer plugged into the objects output shows that we have a list of objects. If I plug this viewer or if I plug the output of a get length node in here, it just says five. And here we have five vectors. And here again, we have five objects. So this simple viewer node, shift a viewer viewer, the standard viewer node gives you like a textual representation of whatever you plug into it. This can be very, very useful when you put together more complex node trees. There's also a 3D viewer, which at first looks uh, just like the regular viewer, but you can plug 3D data, basically vector information into a 3D viewer and it will show you um, stuff up here. So for example, let's forget all this for a second. And I'm just gonna take what I had before, a mesh input, uh, take the cube and take the vertex locations, which is a list of uh, points in 3D space. If I plug those in here, now I have a width that I can increase and I have a color that I can set maybe to red and I can see the vertex locations of the cube, my default standard cube here, all eight locations in the 3D view. If I plug the same output in here, I get a list of eight uh, vectors. So the 3D viewer gives me those squares in the 3D viewport, which can also be very handy. Then there's also a loop viewer that we will be uh, checking out later and other viewers. And before I go, two other infos. Of course, you can also add frames that you can drag uh, nodes into and then you can drag the frame around like this, which can help organize your layout here. You can also give give the frame a name, a label, you can also change the color. And of course, you can also add a reroute node, which is just a little dot that you can use to lay out your noodles uh, in your node tree here. And you might be familiar with uh, some of the hotkeys here. So if you have a connection, you can use control, right click, and then draw a line basically to cut a noodle. And you can use shift, right click and draw to add a reroute node to that noodle. And the cool feature here is because very often you have a setup like this, a noodle coming out of a socket and then going into multiple sockets of other nodes, you can just drag over holding shift, uh, shift, right click, drag over this and it adds a reroute node. And then you can really nicely organize uh, your node trees like this. 
Okay, in the next video, we will check out all the data types that we have available here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, write a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. See you in the next episode. Chris P. Out.